Welcome, dear friends, to Get Indie Gaming and to our review and critique of Vane. This one's a PlayStation 4 exclusive and came out this past January 15th. Build as an adventure with puzzle elements, it feels fair to compare Vane to, say, such classic games as Journey, What Remains of Edith Finch, and the more recent stunner that is Grease. This one fits firmly into the games as an experience genre rather than any other traditional label I could attach to it. As far as the visuals and audio goes, Vane is a triumph throughout. It's awesome to look at and listen to. It's one of the most distinct and beautiful games of recent times. It makes an impressive start, although the lack of here-to-be-flashy-lights information from developers at the start is a serious omission. Strobes and, annoyingly, as I live in the Netherlands and I'm surrounded by them, those flashing lights found on the front end of bicycles can trigger a type of vertigo, as did Vane's opening 90 seconds with it featuring huge amounts of screen shake and a violent electrical storm. Aside from this little bit of nausea, Vane begins promisingly enough as you control your hooded character across a metallic landscape that's being ripped apart by the storm's gale force winds, all accompanied by a soundtrack adding heaps of emotion onto these impressive visuals. As you navigate around the world as it falls apart, you make your way towards what seems to be a place of refuge, although having been denied entry, you're pushed back into the storm. The screen turns to darkness before fading into a new scene within a vast desert, with you now playing as a menacing looking raven. So far, so good as the saying goes, and yet here's where Vane begins to fall apart piece by piece. In my eyes and mind, the speed at which it transcends from being a work of pure class to something with so many, many faults is pretty astounding. Take away the beautiful art, the magnificent, bleak but pounding Blade Runner style audio, and we're left with a game with issues and problems where it saddens me to say, in the form it's been put onto the market in and prior to any patches down the line, Vane is just not a very well-made game. Oh, where to start? Um, well, there's just so many problems at hand here. Let's begin with the camera. Sure, I get and understand how it moves and pans around, giving you different views of the play area is all in the name of cinematography, and yet it's unnecessarily busy in doing so. It's constantly moving and changing the viewpoint, and we're not fussing around like a bored toddler. It glitches when crisscrossing parts of the background environment. Aside from these camera issues, Vane on a bog-standard PlayStation 4, well, it struggles relentlessly with frame rate issues with it faltering and staggering the whole time. I understand those lucky enough to have a PS4 Pro, well, they're perfectly fine, although for my playtime, the jittery images, even during the letterbox desert scenes, were so profoundly off-putting. So, naturally enough, were the game-breaking bugs that found me falling an inter-scenery and being unable to escape them, which required a swift press of the on-off button to get back into the action. The first time this occurred, I gave Vane the benefit of the doubt. The second time, in true British fashion, I was mildly annoyed, and yet by the third game-ending hiccup, I pretty much resolved to walk away and be done with it. Here lies another issue. Vane uses a sparse save function, whereby the only checkpoints are to be found at the start of each of the game's five different areas. This, of course, means if, like me, you had played 30 or so minutes before the game broke, all this time was lost as I could only restart back at the beginning of the level. It honestly feels such an utterly maddening system, and such an odd one to have implemented given how it breaks the flow and immersion. Speaking of which, Vane makes use of standard age-old boulder-pushing, lever-tweaking and button-pressing sections that feels so out of place with something that's trying to emulate and create an emotional attachment to your character, like say you can with your glyph within Journey. One of the rolling over the ball sections saw me pushing the thing around for a good 25 minutes before I realised the ball was probably only there for a fancy piece of decoration. And when I say probably, I certainly mean it. I didn't really know if the ball had any purpose. You see, Vane is another one of these games, like I say again, Journey, Ico and Greece where you discover and progress via exploration and interaction with the game world and what it affords. While those three games all came with elements to nudge you in the correct general direction, with Vane, you're pretty much left on your own. Such clues when they arrive can be so subtle and easy to miss. It's also easy enough to misunderstand something you see, which in turn 
sends you off after a good old fashioned not so enjoyable wild goose chase. I experienced this particularly when playing in the open desert sections of the game. Now I'm also fairly in tune with visual cues and design intonations and yet here with a total lack of guidance and hand holding it doesn't feel liberating as I suspect the game developers wanted it to be. Here such an implementation doesn't feel liberating, it simply feels frustrating and lacklustre. At launch with Vane asking for 25 of your US dollars or 18 British pounds, well if you're looking for a puzzler exploration adventure game there are stronger and subjectively better and more accomplished than Vane in the form it is to play as this video goes to air. As I've duly noted, it starts well enough, looks and sounds fantastic, although that's where the strengths end. Vane is mired by game ending bugs, a poorly implemented camera system, dull and formulaic puzzles, a poorly judged save mechanism and a lack of any meaningful direction setting to let you the player know what you really should be doing. I really wanted to love Vane, just, just look how beautiful it is and yet looks alone don't seal this deal. If anything, it makes the end consumption all the more sour. I played Vane on the launch edition and paid the full RRP from the EU PlayStation Store. Do you have a different opinion on Vane? Let us know in the comments section or on Twitter. If you like this criticism, please hit the like button and perhaps share with your social connections too. Now would also be an awesome time to subscribe to stay fully up to date and not miss out on more indie game reviews, commentary and countdowns. Many thanks for watching, hope to see you all again here soon for another indie game video.